Greetings, fencers. So now we come to the last verses of the title pertaining to the unarmored combat with the longsword. The section on the four hangings and eight windings. Check out episode 30 on the verses of the underhangings if you haven't seen it. The hangings and windings are integral to Lichnauer's system and will be found all throughout the title. But I've seen people often not be able to describe winding, but know it when they see it. And timestamp for the last part of the video will be all 24 windings. Now as we've seen, the hengen or hangings are positions deriving from ox and plow, and vinden means winding, spinning, or turning. Winding is the act of turning into a hanging. Now some manuscripts talk about using the thumb on the blade and the short edge on the left, while others refer to the long edge, so it's what you're most comfortable with. You'll see the term driving and breaking here and throughout the title. Driving means pressuring an opening with an attack to hit or force a reaction, and breaking refers to setting aside their sword and defending, so the hangings and windings will be used both offensively and defensively. The first way to divide the windings is ox and plow. One covers your upper openings and the other covers the lower. What triggers you to choose is what opening they are threatening. If they threaten a lower opening, then you'll probably just slide off their blade if you wind into ox, and if they threaten above, then plow will not get the strong on their weak, which is necessary for success. Because the advice given is to engage the upper openings most often, you'll spend more time winding into ox and plow in order to protect your head. The next way the windings are devised is hard and soft. Four for when they are hard or pushing off line in the bind, and four for when they are soft or holding the center line. The soft winds are reasonably simple and are getting your strong on their weak to take the center line and hit. Now the hard winds take a bit more practice. If you feel them pushing off to the side, then you wind in the same motion in either ox or plow, but on the outside of the sword. This may seem scary or foolish at first, but if someone gets three inches of steel through their throat, they will likely die near immediately. As well as in real life, you're getting closer, so even if they move the sword, they can't kill you. And just put your arm out in front of you if you want extra control. Swords aren't lightsabers, even sharp ones. This however does mean that outer windings work significantly less in HEMA environment and will often lead to doubles. But I have managed to get one in a tournament, outer winding into left ox and covering my head. The Drei Wunder, or Three Wonders, are the three ways to harm your opponent. Cut, Thrust, and Slice, or more accurately translated, Hew, Thrust, Cut. It is the same motion, same wind, regardless of the wonder. At the longest range, use the point, closer than cut, and if your cut was weak or you're very close, then slice, generally targeting the neck and face with the slice, although other areas can be targeted. They can all be done from each wind, which leads to 24 ways to wind into ox and plow. Now there's actually a very important lesson hidden in this verse. We are deliberately told to step. Which step you chose fully depends on range and context. Passing steps, advancing steps, triangle steps, and stepping offline in all different ways can be used. But the important thing is we are stepping, not reaching. Hangings and windings are about protecting you and controlling the bind. The further something is from the body, the weaker it is. And as something goes forward, the easier it moves side to side. Long point is not a winding position. Shooting the point is fine if they're weak and that is the best option, but know that if you start extending your arms in front of you, you have lost the control and the protection and are relying purely on the point hitting. The author of 3227A gives a funny analogy about trying to extend in the windings. He's countering other fencing masters that see winding as short and weak and they only teach fighting with extended arms. Just as the Leichmeister disdain them and say that fencing from the winding is weak, and they call it from the shortened sword because they are simple and foolish, and they mean that these are fenced from the longsword, which is done with outstretched arms and extended sword and also aggressively with all strength of the body, only by pressing themselves forward, and this is painful to watch. If one stretches just as running after a rabbit, this is not the way, nor is it the windings or Leichnauer's art, because there is no strength against the sword. Whoever does it differently than them should prefer strength. Make sure you're using the hangings and stepping so you keep their blade controlled as Lichnauer says. 
As we've seen, we may only have a small moment, and so we react with a wind whether they're soft or hard, and we've seen many examples of winding throughout the title. Doubling is an outer winding, turning into a hanging with a cut or slice. Mutating is another example. If someone gives up the centerline with a bad wind, or is weak, then wind over into a hanging. Setting off can be done to tempo, hang then wind, or just wind into the hanging that covers you. And outer taking is winding when they're hard. You'll find the windings all throughout the manuscript, even if the word wind isn't used. But when you see the word long point, shoot, set on, you know it's not referring to a wind. And just like with long point, winding isn't a secret weapon that will always win. Be careful about prioritizing the bind too much. Any movement in distance that doesn't threaten them is an invitation for them to hit. Make sure all your winds are solid and will hit them if they don't react, so it's a real threat. There are examples throughout the title of how to counter winding. If you fight shortened in the hangings, they can change through and hit. Check out my Shilhao episode for a very explicit section on defeating winding. Spend lots of time practicing the specifics of winding and listening to advice from skilled fencers old and new. The Vinden are the real art and the base of all fencing with the sword and from these all other techniques and methods come from. Thanks for watching, keep studying, keep practicing. Now here will be demonstrated all 24 windings. First with a thrust, then cut, then slice. Using the bind after two high cuts for consistency. It is something I'm always practicing and trying to improve at. And they are situation specific, so if your partner has his hands too high or doesn't push the right direction, you'll find some windings more difficult. Depending on who you spar and practice with, some of these will be more common than others. Ha ha ha!